How do I make my child independent? Should I homeschool my children or should I send them to a formal school? When can my child start reading and counting? What materials should I buy or put on the shelf so my child will learn better? Why isn't my child interested in the materials I have prepared for him? Why does my child have tantrums every day? How can I make my children tidy up after they play? How can I push my students to meet academic expectations? How can I make my husband more patient and have a better parenting style? What should I do so my parents and my parents-in-law support my parenting approach? What should I post on my social media to educate others? Parents and teachers. Most of the time, the things that I just mentioned before become our main focus, right? No matter what method or approach or style we use in our parenting or teaching, we usually focus on the children or students, materials, or other people. What about the preparation of ourselves? Since it is the only thing we can really control, right? Unfortunately, it's often the very thing that gets the least of our focus. When I just gave birth to my child, I heard about Montessori and started to learn more about it. In the first place, I thought that with Montessori, I would be able to make my child a better one. I wanted him to excel, have a better learning journey, and etc. When I had a deeper understanding about Montessori as well as implementing its philosophy, it wasn't my child who changed first. It was me who transformed into a new person. Then you will see how your attitude, perspective, uh, parenting, teaching, and mindset towards children all together change too. This change has brought a positive impact to my child and my students as well. And I have seen wonderful things happen in their journey. The transformation of the adults. That's the key. Because the transformation of parents and educators is the beginning of a successful parenting and education. I'm Ursula, a mother, a Montessori trainer, a Montessori directress here in Pennsylvania, United States of America. And today, I'll be talking about the secret of successful parenting and education that is most likely to be forgotten by us. The secret is the preparation of the adult. Yes, the preparation of ourselves. And I will be guiding you through four preparations to transform ourselves to be a new person with a new perspective on children education and qualities that will help our children or students be the best version of themselves. Parents and teachers, we might have heard about some Montessori principles, uh, freedom within limits, follow the child. We have heard about freedom in learning or Merdeka Belajar. We understand the importance of providing freedom in learning for our children or students. But real quick, I want to show you why children need freedom in learning. Check this video out. Wow, I know you already got the message of the video. It is very obvious. But let me make it clear. What did you see in that video? 
You sow that the tiny seed thrived into a healthy, vigorous, beautiful plant? And what did the person do to the seed so it could grow into a new plant? Did he give it any instruction to grow? Or interfere with the growth? Or dig it up just to check if the seed was sprouting? Did he disturb what he had planted? He didn't do any of those things. So, did he do nothing? He definitely did something. He provided everything the seed needed. He provided the right environment and nourishment. He made sure that the seed got enough sunlight, water, nutrients, right? And then he stepped back, waited, and let the seed grow naturally. The seed knows how to grow and what kind of plant it will become in the future. It knows when to sprout, when the leaves grow, when it flowers, when the flower produces fruit, when the fruit releases seeds, and so on. Because within every seed is the blueprint for growing, developing, and becoming something beautiful and useful. We know that even though the seed looks so tiny, it is important. Because it is the beginning of the plant. If the seed is cultivated, it will grow into a new plant. It will bloom and blossom. Unfortunately, the way we see a seed is far from how we see children. Most of the time, children are considered nothing, have no importance, empty being that we as adults need to fill and guide step by step. We even think that we are their creators. It is hard for us to believe that every child has an inner teacher, inner guide, or a blueprint, just like the seed we just watched. Most of the time, we interfere with their inner guide and forget to provide what our children or students really need to grow and develop. It is hard for us to position ourselves like the person who planted the seed we watched earlier in the video. Provide, nurture, step back, and watch. Let's ask ourselves, how many times do we think, act, and decide for our children? Do we correct and criticize their work? As teachers, how many times do we judge our students by their grades or scores? How many times do we think so hard to fulfill the national academic expectation that we forget to think of how to fulfill our students' needs to learn and develop? How many times do we compare them to others? With those mistakes, how much freedom have we taken away from them all this time? Maria Montessori said that the child who has never learned to work by himself, to set goals for his own acts, or to be the master of his own force of will is recognizable in the adult who lets others guide his will and feels a constant need for approval of others. It will happen if children don't have the freedom to decide, make mistakes, do repetitions, explore, develop, or learn according to their needs. There will be no independence, no confidence. Dr. Maria Montessori said that the goal of early childhood education is to activate children's own natural desire to learn. We, as parents and teachers, are there to cultivate their own own natural desire to learn. We are not there to impose our own desire on them. We have to let them grow and develop naturally, like the seed we just watched. By following their inner teacher, their blueprint, their inner guide. To be able to grow and develop their potential naturally, they need the freedom to learn, explore, uh, develop, and reach their maximum potential in their own way. Again, in their own way. Believe it or not, homes or schools that are not able to provide that freedom will just be a prison to the children. For us as adults, to be able to provide that freedom in learning at home or school, we need to change the way we see children. 
We need to change our mindset, attitude, and this can be done through the preparation that we will discuss in a minute. Train ourselves to trust that children have the abilities to grow and develop their potential. Did you teach your baby how to crawl, how to speak, how to walk, how to understand language? No, you didn't. Those are some evidence that our children have the ability to teach themselves. Just prepare what they need to grow and develop and then trust them to do their part. Most of the time, we are not patient with our children or students. We tend to make them do what we think is the best for them to do. Pressure, coercion, and parental intervention that are not in accordance with the children's developmental needs can ruin their inner teacher, their spiritual embryo. As a result, children will be restless, start showing unwanted behavior, can't reach their maximum potential. Remember, children are the next generation who will carry the civilization forward. The little one you see today will create the adult that she or he will become in the future. They are most important and deserve the best from us. This is the main reason why we have to prepare ourselves to be the prepared parents or teachers so we can do our task as adults in the right way and we won't destroy the potential that is already there within the children. Without preparing ourselves to be the prepared adults, it will be hard for us to be able to provide them with freedom in learning. Now that we all agree that the preparation of the adult is very important, you may ask me, what preparation is that? So let me share with you the four ways of preparation that we can do as parents and teachers. First is the spiritual preparation. Dr. Maria Montessori said that the first step we have to do is to modify ourselves, change our attitude towards children. This preparation is very important and comes before any other preparations. The spiritual preparation will help us correct our evil tendencies. Oh yeah, did you know that Dr. Maria Montessori mentioned seven deadly sins that tend to separate us from children? Today I want to discuss the two of them. The most dangerous sins when working with children. The first one is anger and the second one is pride. Our anger is typically a reaction to a child's resistance. It usually comes when we have a lack of control over children or the environment, right? In my classroom, a Montessori prepared environment, I have children from all different backgrounds, characteristics, behaviors, and etc. There is always time when I have to deal with challenging behavior. If I wasn't a prepared adult, I would just yell at the child in the classroom, punish him, give him a time out, and I would do those horrible things openly in front of his friends. If I wasn't a prepared adult. But I am a prepared adult. I prepare myself spiritually. I know that my anger can offend my child and students. I know that if I act while I am angry, I tend to hurt them both physically and psychologically. And those children will absorb my anger. I understand that behind every behavior shown by my child or students, even the worst one, is the motivation and message that they want to convey to me. When I am angry, I won't be able to understand and see it because anger prevents us from understanding the child. Yeah, our anger will prevent us from understanding our children or students. The next one is pride. We tend to think that we are the ones who make the child intelligent, smart, religious, successful, independent, well-behaved, and etc. That is pride. Please be aware that children's success belongs to them. Yeah. Their success belongs to them. When we are full of pride, 
we will demand the children or students to always fulfill or gratify our pride so we will look great, famous in front of other people. We will not accept failure or mistakes. We will blame them for not achieving what we want. With anger and pride dwelling in us, there will be no freedom in learning we can provide to the children. With the awareness of these dangerous sins, we will understand that just because we are older doesn't mean that we are better, smarter, or wiser than the children. We will then examine ourselves, try our best to tear down our anger and pride, do self-reflection, renew ourselves, then we will find that our response to the children will change. Believe it or not, the children will absorb your good behavior, your kindness, and the respect you give them. The second one is intellectual preparation. Preparing ourselves intellectually means equipping ourselves with knowledge. We have to understand the stages of child development. You won't be able to provide freedom in learning if you don't know in which plane of development your children or students are, and you will always make negative assumptions. Oh, this child, yeah, he is a slow learner. Yeah, he is difficult to follow directions. He must be on a spectrum. He can stay still. I think he is hyperactive. Oh, yeah, she can't concentrate. She always talks back. She is a naughty little girl. See? Negative assumptions. Judgment. Let's understand the children you are working with by knowing the four phases, stages, or planes of development they go through. First plane of development, zero to six years. This plane is known for the child's ability to absorb everything around him through his senses to construct himself. So this is also called the absorbent mind. Their minds absorb facts and reality around them just like a sponge absorbing water. At this age, children are spontaneously active. So you're not going to force them to sit still, right? And their intelligence develops rapidly. The second plane of development from 6 to 12 years, this plane is known for the child's powerful imagination and reasoning mind. The second plane children ask a lot of questions about how things around them work. You know why? Because they are developing their reasoning skills and they want to know how things work and are interdependent. They are ready for abstract learning. They need to go out to explore the world. They enjoy social life and like to work as a group member. They also learn the importance of rules, values, morality, knowing right from wrong. So you will have to involve them in making rules and discuss why those rules are important. Let them socialize. You can also spark their imagination and reasoning mind by telling them story of how this universe was formed, the coming of life, the early human, how human invented language and numbers. You can also use charts, pictures that can help them imagine how things work. Give them responsibility of their learning. Let them go out to explore things in the environment, society, find their own discovery, and etc. Third plane of development from 12 to 18 years. This plane is known for the child's idealism in standards and goals. They are abstract learners. They need to discover their intended vocations. And there is a decrease in their intellectual capacity because of the process of puberty. They are very, very sensitive and emotional. They really need emotional support and respect, and that's what we have to fulfill. And then the fourth plane of development from 18 to 24 years. This plane is known for the child's spiritual, emotional, and moral independence. Since they finalized the development at this stage, they are not children anymore, but men. They have personal responsibility, they find their place within the world, and they think of what contribution they will give to the world. And there is a strong desire for financial independence during this plane of development. Okay, So now, the third preparation is the technical preparation. In this preparation, we prepare ourselves to understand the aims of materials how and when to present them. 
We do a lot of hands-on practice, how to connect the children to the materials and the prepared environment. We practice to be exact in our movement and voice in our presentation. This preparation can be done through training or courses and daily practice. I once obtained my diploma in Montessori education at Sunshine Teachers Training. That is the best decision I ever made as a mother and educator. If I never learned at Sunshine Teachers Training, I wouldn't be a Montessori guide the way I am today. With this diploma, I could also get the offer to be a lead Montessori teacher here in the United States of America. And it is true that in this digital era, we can easily get a lot of information about Montessori from the internet, social media, right? But if you never did any Montessori training or diploma before, or don't have enough knowledge about Montessori, then how will you filter the information you get from social media? How can you tell what is right or wrong, which one is a watered-down version, and which one carries the authentic Montessori philosophy. As parents and educators, the diploma in Montessori education will be the best investment for a lifetime. The fourth preparation is physical preparation. When working with children, we have to be physically prepared. And this includes our appearance, voice, body language, movement. At work, I always consider what I wear. Yes, my outfit should look professional, but comfortable. I don't wear big rings, bracelets, because they can be distracting or may hit the tabletops or materials when I present a lesson, right? I make sure that my shoes have soft soles or rubber soles to prevent noise when I walk in the classroom. I don't have long fingernails or nail art, so it will be easy for me when I have to pick up the beads or other small items, and the children will not be distracted from the lesson and material I am presenting. And we have to model the graceful movement and respectful communication, voice intonation and volume. Parents and teachers, we can do this. Sometimes we may fail, feel upset or frustrated. We may think that we are incapable because we have weaknesses. But Dr. Maria Montessori said that it is not necessary for us to be perfect educators and free from every weakness. We just need to keep learning, examining ourselves, learn from our mistakes, and be mindful. And the most important thing is that we must have a genuine love and desire to serve and work with children. What does preparation of the adult have to do with the freedom in learning? When you have a genuine desire to work with and serve the children, you undergo the four ways of the preparation of the adult that we just discussed before, and you constantly improve yourself, learn from mistakes, it means that you are transforming yourself into a prepared adult. And the prepared adult knows her position and roles in the prepared environment when working with children. So you will also transform the education system in the environment to be children-centered, life-giving, and the most important thing is that you will provide freedom in learning, which balances with responsibility. Remember, Give freedom according to their discipline level. See if they are able to make responsible choice or not. Are they capable of following the rules? Do they have self-discipline or do they still need us to guide and remind them? Because freedom must be given within limits. The freedom must be interrupted quickly when the children do something harmful to themselves, other people, or the environment. But we say a positive statement when setting the limits, okay? For example, um, instead of saying, be quiet, it is story time, we say, I will start reading the story when you are quiet. Instead of saying, don't run, don't run, we say, in the classroom, we walk carefully. Instead of saying, don't scream, we say, in the classroom, we speak quietly. By preparing ourselves spiritually, intellectually, technically, and physically, I hope we will understand our position and remember that the children are the owners of their learning. They have tremendous potential, and Dr. Maria Montessori called it mysterious powers within the child. 
I would like to end my session by sharing with you one of Dr. Maria Montessori's quotes. The greatest help you can give your children is the freedom to go about their own work in their own way. For in this matter, your child knows better than you.